You guys can all make fun of me for being a boomer because I'm tired of brake dust on my fancy white wheels. Filthy! Yes, I bend metal with my nose. <laughs> Which is even more 80s. What's up, people? Welcome back to Casey's 80s Garage. Today we are working on the Porsche 944. It's from 1983, which is very clearly 80s. And it's got some white wheels, which is even more 80s. Enough with the 80s. So what are we doing with the car? Okay, today, one, I don't have a camera person, so I'm gonna bring the tripod around. It's still gonna be cool, so bear with me. But we're going to put the wheels back on. I got new tires on it. And I found some really cool discs out of some real soft aluminum from Mr. Gasket that we're gonna modify so that my beautiful white 80s wheels don't get dust all over them. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Then I just changed the oil, which I'm not gonna show you guys. I actually have to get some work done now and then and get it done quick. I think you've changed your oil. We'll figure it out. But I'm gonna show you how to really quickly get the degrading sound insulation off the top of the hood. And then we're gonna go on to the shifter. So let's check out something, come with me. This stuff has gotta go. It's the sound deadening stuff. So from way back when all of the heat getting cold, getting hot, getting cold, getting hot, just burns this stuff out. And if I just touch it, it just falls down. You could brush it away, but you make a huge mess. And I know this sounds overly simple, which it is, and I love it. You just get a shop vac. I've got one here. It's enormous. Shop vac professional, which is just a fancy word that they put on everything to make you feel special when you buy it. It's still just a shop vac. Okay, watch this. It's really satisfying. Hopefully it works. I don't look like an idiot. Too light, Casey. You already look like an idiot. Dude. Okay, here we go. Yes, go up camera. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Who needs a camera person? Thank you all for still watching. That's amazing. Okay, right here on the uh, cam sprocket housing for the timing belt, a very nice fan saw I was missing the plug, the timing plug, and the sticker that goes right here. And his name is Patrick, and he just writes, as a fellow Porsche 944, I wish you all the best with your reach and purchase the white 944. These cars are simply wonderful to drive and maintain. I noticed during your car purchasing tutorial video that your cam gear cover was missing the inspection hole grommet, as well as the firing order decal. Please accept the enclosed as my very small contribution to the cost. Well, it's very nice, and I appreciate it. So let's stick it on here, you guys. I was just gonna show you, it's kind of neat. Um, actually, I already cleaned the surface here with some brake cleaner. I'll do it again just to make sure it sticks. Uh, it's going everywhere. Hooray. Just remember that when you're going to put a decal on something, you only really get one shot at it. Oh, gosh. And that went everywhere. Brilliant. Casey's an idiot. Idiot. Okay. Well, this is where I screw everything up. I'm going to go find some Windex. Yeah, this is my shop, and I don't have everything I need. And, oh, God. Okay, so let me level with you guys. The troubling thing about YouTube is it's a lot of work to do this. So the problem is when you get a lot of real work, so to speak, on cars, like a lot, it becomes really, really hard to do both. So the reason why a lot of times with the King Zero or something, there's work that I do and I can't show you guys what it is, it's because I've got so much work, I have to just get some done, okay? Um, and the reason why other YouTubers like take forever to get something done is, because they don't do very much real work or they do it at YouTube appropriate pace for production and such. And I know ain't nobody got time for that. I gotta get this car done because I have to drive it. It's my everyday car, probably like a lot of you. Okay, enough of that. And I had this rag and it didn't ruin everything. And I use Windex, which is terrible to use Windex on your car's finish because it'll strip off all the waxes. But in this circumstance, I don't mind stripping off all the waxes because I'm going to polish this thing and prepare it for Avalon King ceramic coating, which is awesome. And by the way, kudos to one of my fans. I know I'm totally off the rails here. Just listen. One of my fans wrote on there about Avalon King that he got a new toilet and he's going to ceramic coat the porcelain on the inside with Avalon King so he doesn't have to clean it as much and it will be more like less bio nasties will be able to stick to it. That's genius. 
I hope he does it. I wonder if it'll work. It's got to work better than anything. Okay, so there you go. Casey's uh, automotive tips on keeping your toilet hygienic. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, so uh, now you guys are going to say, Casey, you're sitting in your white 944. It looks kind of like a toilet. <laughs> oh, man, I am off the rails. So in two days, I get to test a 800 horsepower sprint car in December. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so here's the sticker. Yes, very nice. And here is the plug. Let's put it in the hole. Go in the hole. Go in your home. I might have gone easier if I spit on it. That was not a joke. <laughs> okay. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Now, to put the sticker on, I'm gonna do something intelligent for once. Get my Swiss Army knife. Genius! Actually, there's a good reason for it. My hands are pretty dirty, because I'm working. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use my Swiss Army knife that's clean, with just the tip of the blade, to hold the decal, like that. And then I can place the decal exactly where I want it and put it down without getting my grubby paw prints all over it. That's gonna look nice. That's nice, it's just a small detail, but it kind of helps bring the car back. I like that. I also like to make fun of, uh... well I shouldn't say boomers, because I don't want to proliferate that. But you know what I'm talking about, the lawn chair people that overly uh, uh, restore their old muscle cars and sit in lawn chairs, and that's like their hobby instead of driving it. But uh, it's nice to bring this back. This is a good car, so why not? It's fun. Okay, enough of that malarkey. Now that we've done the engine bay, it's time to do the wheel covers. Ah. Okay, all right, I've got stuff here. I'm sitting on the floor like a child. Casey, don't you have a better working area? Yeah, you know, kind of. Actually, Miller Welders gave us an amazing welding table and station, which you'll see soon. It's right behind the camera. You don't get to see it now. Okay, anyway, so here's the deal. Um, you guys can all make fun of me for being a boomer because I'm tired of brake dust on my fancy white wheels. And let's face it, it's a street car. It doesn't need that much in the way of ventilation. And if I put some good brake pads on it anyway, uh, when am I gonna get it that hot? Porsche 944s don't make that much power. And if somebody starts chasing me again, uh, they're, they're picking with the wrong guy. Um, so I'm not really worried about brake fade. It's gonna be fine. Anyway, Casey, why are you worried about somebody chasing you? <laughs> I grew up in Tiffin, Ohio. Weird stuff happens out in the sticks. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so here are the discs. Now, the fascinating thing about this is the absurdly soft aluminum alloy. Watch this. Watch how easy it bends. Like, I can, I could probably, I could probably, I'm going to push on this with my nose and see if I can bend it with my nose. I know that sounds insane. Watch. Here, look. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I swear to God, it's that soft. My nose, or I'm hard nose. I'm a hard nose jerk. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, I bend metal with my nose. <laughs> That's the secret. Okay, now this metal's really soft, which normally would be annoying in about any circumstances, but in this one, it works pretty well. So I wanna show you the trouble with it. Now these dust shields were made for 15 inch. I'm gonna adjust the camera. I know this doesn't look very professional right now. I'm doing the best I can with no camera guy. Okay, here we go. So look how filthy that is. Filthy! It used to be white underneath there. On the outside, it's mostly white. I would like it to be whiter because it'll look fancier. And so these are gonna go underneath. And I really kind of am cringing at doing this because it is such like a boomer hot rod thing to do. Okay, anyway. But let's face it, it's, it's just, it's, it's utilitarian. I need to be fancy with my 80s Fuchs wheels. Okay, so check this out. So if I take this and stick it in there, trouble is, it does not go in, okay? It's too big. And now, the problem is, check this out, I can lift the whole wheel with it because it Chinese finger traps itself in there. Okay, here we go. Oh, so I gotta poke it out that way. So what I did on the others, and this is so lightweight that you really don't have to worry about it throwing off the balance of your wheels if it's off by like a half a millimeter or something. You're never gonna notice, let's be honest. So here, I just took some metal shears and just shaved off about an eighth of an inch the whole way around it. Now, when I first did this, to cut off a little bit, and I just sort of guessed about an eighth inch, you can take a, a marker and put your finger right up against the tip like this, if you see what I'm doing here, and I can hold it like this, you don't wanna cut yourself, and go around the whole way like this, and then you'll be able to see the little bit of a mark. I know it's black on black, but this isn't true black, it comes out kind of purple and shiny with a little bit of a copper tint. But anyway, so I'm just gonna wing it because I think I'm cool. 
And I'm not being serious, clearly. Okay, so I'm gonna try to knock off an eighth of an inch. And then clearly you're saying, well, Casey, how do you know where you started? You could just keep going and it would be like peeling an apple and then you're all the way down to the core. Uh, well, yeah, that's true, uh, but I will just kind of pay attention and stop when I get to the other side where I started cutting it. So you want some sharp metal shears. You want to take your time. I'm holding it kind of like an artist palette with my thumb here. Obviously, you don't want to cut yourself if it's sharp. Why do I worry about that? Because it's the internet, Casey, and somebody will cut themselves doing something similar to you, and then they will try to sue you because in modern times, nobody's responsible for their own actions, and it's always somebody else to blame. <laughs> Can I say that nowadays? No, Casey, you're not allowed to say things that are true. Okay, here we go. Cut, 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 cut. Can't you cut any faster? No. I'm trying to do a good job, people. Here we go. Goofy things. All right, here we go. Oh my God. I wonder if Casey talks like this on his own by himself or it's just with the camera. It's just with the camera. If you guys weren't here through the camera, I would be listening to crunchy tunes that are copyrighted and I would be dancing around like an idiot and making stuff, but I can't because the interweb. And then I'll have somebody like that Denise Halicki or whatever that will sue me to death and take away my car. Yeah, that was a dig on the Eleanor thing. Okay, so let's see, will it fit? What I'm trying to do is make it fit snugly so I kind of have to shove it, ooh, that's nice. Oh, I did a good job. <laughs> I want a cookie. Okay, I gotta pop it back out because it won't come out without. Come on, out of there. Oh, 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 yes. All right, now the next part, I wish I could show you guys on the other one, but frankly, I don't want to go moving the camera around that much. Trouble is Porsche's, their bolt pattern is really big. It's five by 130 millimeters. And this is made for most American car wheels, which is smaller. So the trouble is these, um, openings don't go far enough out. Like they're not, they don't, they don't, <sighs> kind of tired you guys. Okay, they don't, damn, what's wrong with my vocabulary? Okay, ain't gonna fit. Okay, so that, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hog it out with this carbide like this. And you're like, Casey, how do you keep it straight? Uh, it doesn't need to be that straight. It'll be fine. You just gotta hold your tongue right. Yeah, oh yeah, look at that. There we go. Some, everywhere, every time you do something like this, or use the word ain't when working on a Porsche, a Porsche snob dies. Yes! That is the benefit to being soft aluminum. Okay, so now the next thing I gotta do is, you know, you gotta be mindful of it so you don't slice the heck out of yourself. There's gonna be a bunch of burrs, so I'm gonna use my pocket knife. I'm just gonna deburr it, deburr it, which is nice. The aluminum's so soft, it's like hard clay. It's pretty easy to deburr. There are there are also deburring tools that machinists are familiar with when you drill a hole. Um, but I got a knife in my pocket, which in this circumstance will work just fine. And this metal's so darn soft anyway, it's gonna be self-tolerancing when you squish it all down. But I might as well make it look half decent. Plus all these little flakes and stuff will just be more prone to corrosion. And then over a few years of corrosion, will probably try to creep underneath the uh, black paint, which would be a drag. All right. Honestly, this aluminum is so soft, I swear I could just slice into the metal with it. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I know I'm probably in some ways being a bad role model because I'm doing this so quick right now. But I also like doing this because it just goes to show that you know, working on cars and um, just modding stuff doesn't have to be like completely insanely difficult. All right, so I think that's gonna work because I did two of them already. Since I cut this out pretty nice and round and it's gonna shove in there, what problem are we gonna have? Well, the problem is some water will get itself in there even if just when I wash the car. And with this jammed in there real well, after a while when it gets gunk and goo and dust and crap, it will pool water inside there. So I wanna make sure that if any water gets between this disc and that, that it can come out. But I don't wanna drill a big hole and I don't wanna have a huge gap which will let dust in, I'll see it. So what I'm gonna do is, if you notice, here's a spoke, here's a spoke, here's a spoke, blah, blah, blah. And I can see where the holes are. 
In between the holes for the lug nuts, there is a spoke where you can't see it. So right here in between the lug nuts, this area you can't see. So what I'm gonna do just down here, I am going to cut a little triangle shape out just like this. One second, see? And then that will allow any water that gets in there to come out. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that behind every one of these big spokes. Yes, okay, so, yes. So the metal's nice and soft. Now I can bend this back just with my fingers. You can see here how it's bent, but I can easily just go like that and bend it back straight. So I'm just doing it real quick. It's like hard clay. All right, and then we'll see how it fits. And I know this is a good opportunity to clean up my entire wheel, but I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna get dirty. So I don't, I don't really care if the underneath of my car is dirty. It's just gonna get more dirty because I'm gonna drive it. So, I mean, if I can shoot a, if I'm washing it, I'll wash it sometime, but you gotta know where to draw the line with cars or you, you make yourself crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up a little before I throw it on. What the heck is my Windex? I don't have any brake dust remover here. I don't even have a hose here right now. So I'm literally gonna use Windex. Weirdly enough, it works pretty well in this circumstance. And initially, I'm just gonna use this junky shop rag and get most of the dust and filth off. And then, once I get the bulk of the gross off with this, I'll come back, shoot it again, do a little more with the shop rag. And then in a second, I'll come back with the microfiber and really get after it because you can see that after years of having brake dust sitting on the, uh, the white paint of the Fuchs, it's kind of stained it, made it look kind of dingy. Sort of like you had a white room and then you let a smoker in there too long. It looks just like that actually. <laughs> it looks nicotine stained, that's hilarious. By the way, who remembers when they had cigarette vending machines? I actually do. The last place I remember a cigarette vending machine was the Rustic on the west side of Cleveland. You know what I'm talking about? That restaurant that looks like a log cabin? Yeah, they still had those in like the late 80s. <laughs> it was hilarious. Okay, not bad, let's put it on. Oh, my feet, oh. Okay, time to throw this thing on here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay, so these particular lug nuts are aluminum, so I have to be nice to them. And it appears that the studs uh, still have a decent amount of anti seize paste on them, so I'm not real worried about that there. Everything looks good. This is a good opportunity to have a look-see over your tie rod linkages and things like that if there's any play. Also, when you put the wheel on, you can move the wheel and feel if there's any play. On my left side, I did notice that my steering rack, the joint at the steering rack is loose for the tie rod that steers it so the wheel can go like this. So that's gonna be something I wanna take care of. Um, frankly, on a car like this with tires that have such big sidewall, you can get away with a little more of that because you don't feel it as much. And it sort of just kind of floats over undulations in the pavement and whatnot. But my Viper that has like no sidewall doesn't and it sucks. Okay, so here we go. Get this thing in here and see if you guys can see it. All right, I know this is so jank looking, but I swear it's gonna look good and work well. Now there's a little other something I noticed about this that I'll be perfectly honest about. You gonna get in there? The, um, where this edge is right here, it bends over and when this is gonna get clamped all the way down, it's gonna end up denting it like right here. So it's gonna be sort of self-clearancing. But thankfully the Luna is so darn soft that I'm really not concerned about it being a problem. And it seemed to do just fine on the other ones, but that was something I had to be mindful of. Let me uh, do something here real quick. Okay, this is a little trickier because now that it doesn't have the, uh, the holes and the wheels to see through, because I'm putting on these dust covers, it's harder to see the lugs. So, so I have to kind of have a visual reference as to where the studs were and then hold the wheel with the same orientation and start getting it close without banging it all up. Now, another tip I like to tell everybody that's very important, especially with lug nuts that are aluminum and softer, is when you go to thread your lug nuts or lug bolts on or in, 
please take the time to thread them on by hand as far as you can. Because if you just put them on a tiny bit and then hit it with an impact, that's where it's so easy to cross thread them. And I gotta tell you what, cross threaded wheel nuts, lug nuts and lug bolts, in my opinion, is about the worst. I absolutely hate that. Hold on. I'm fixing the light. Yes. Oh, it's too close. Hey, lighting, people. Makeup. I don't wear makeup. <laughs> I could probably use some though, right? Oh man. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so don't cross thread your stuff. Make sure you put it on. Don't get all cocky. And if you got somebody working for you or helping you out that thinks they're all cool, don't let them think they're all cool because they're not and they're going to screw it up. Ask me how I know these things. Okay. <sighs> Where did it go? Where's the impact? Okay. Now here's the other thing. I just said, where's the impact? And you guys are gonna go, no, Casey, good point. I shouldn't necessarily use this, but it's my car and I could screw it up if I want to. Also, I'm not using a 12 point, I'm using a six point that fits well. And I can also bring it on slow like this. And that's uh, already it's starting to smush the aluminum down. Good. It's got it. So I'll torque those properly later, but I just did it quick. Obviously you guys saw initially, I kind of went cross and then around and then cross again. I just had to feel it out. I was smushing this down and not putting a whole lot of torque on it, but pretty happy with that. And it looks a little dorky and who knows that might end up looking grubby soon. And maybe I won't like them after all. And I'll just want to try some brake pads that are low dust. But in the meantime, I'm going to try them out. I think it'll be nice to keep the car looking Hey, he's fresh with the white wheels. Um, so I got a bunch more things coming up. This video is going on a little bit longer, so we're going to cut it here. I will get to the interior stuff with the shifter, uh, the short shifter kit, as well as the shifter here to get rid of the slop. The actual short shifter parts go on the transaxle in the rear underneath the car. So it's a good opportunity to also be working on the exhaust and whatnot. But for the very least, I'm excited to have some new tires on here for you 944 geeks. I went ahead and bought some Yokohama Avid Touring S, because they seemed like about the best all around tire I could get for the money for a 944 um, on paper. We'll see if they're any good. Last tires I got were Coopers, meh. So we'll see how these are. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this. I'll see you next time.